Hey guys, guess what time it is? It's school time! Yay! Hi guys, my name is Anna English. This is English Like a Native and in just a few moments we are going to be going back to school. But if you are here for the very first time and you're interested in improving your English, perfecting your pronunciation and increasing your English vocabulary, then be sure to press the subscribe button and the bell notification button so you don't miss out on any future lessons. Okay, so whether you are a current student or if your student days are far, far behind you, school is something that stays with us and comes up in conversation time and time again. Typically in the UK, children begin attending school at the tender age of three or four, where they attend nursery, nursery. Then from the age of four to 11, they start attending full-time school. And this stage is called primary school, primary school. Then the hard work kicks in and children from the age of 11 to 16 attend secondary school secondary school. In the States, this is known as high school. We do sometimes say high school here, but it's less common. Once secondary school is over, woo and the exams are all finished, these young adults may decide to go on to sixth form college. Try saying that when you're tired. Sixth form. Sixth form. <gasps> we just say sixth form. It's easier. Sixth form college is not compulsory, but it's necessary if students want to go on to a university course in the future. We also have some schools referred to as special schools, and these are schools that meet the requirements of students who have learning or physical disabilities. Some schools in the UK prefer to split the genders, and so one school might focus solely on educating girls. No boys allowed no boys allowed. Whereas other schools might focus solely on educating boys, so no girls allowed. Whereas other schools are happy to educate boys and girls all together. If you go to a single gender school, then you refer to it as an all boys school or an all girls school. I went to an all girls school. What about you? Some people might ask you whether you went to a state school or a private school. State school is school provided by the government, so it's paid for by the taxpayer. So basically, it's free school, but not free because you pay for it with your taxes. And private school is school that's paid for privately by the parents of the children that attend that school. Confusingly, private school can also be known as public school. It's very confusing. So if you went to a private school and somebody asks you if you went to a public school, you can say yes. English is very odd. In the UK, in primary and secondary school, it is compulsory. That means you have to do it. It is compulsory to wear a school uniform. Now, every school has a different uniform. Each school will have its own colours and its own emblem or logo, which will appear potentially on their blazers or their jumpers. But practically all school uniforms will consist of the following. A white shirt, usually long sleeved. A tie, a pair of trousers for the boys or girls. A skirt for the girls. Pinafores are quite popular in primary school. And then you must wear smart shoes. Some girls like to pull their socks all the way up to their knees. These are called knee-high socks. Then most school uniforms are completed with a cardigan, a jumper, or a blazer. Can you remember your school uniform? When I was at school, my school uniform was bottle green. Ugh, I had to wear bottle green every day for five years. I hated it. What colour is your school uniform? Primary and secondary schools in the UK follow a curriculum. This means no matter which school you go to, there are certain core subjects which you will study. And these subjects are English, 
This could be separated into English language and English literature, maths, science, history, geography, another foreign language like Spanish, French, German, design and technology, art, music, physical education, which is normally shortened to PE, computing, and citizenship. Religious education or religious studies, which can be shortened to RE or RS. Personally, my favourite subjects were PE and English. What are your favourite subjects? Now, the rules are usually pretty obvious. It's things like don't set the school on fire, don't swear at the teachers, don't flick food at the dinner ladies. But if you do decide to break the rules, then it's likely you're going to be punished. Punishment at school will vary depending on the severity of the incident. If you've just been a little bit naughty, like talking in class when you should be listening, then you're likely to get a telling off. This means that you will be shouted at or that the teacher will have a word with you and tell you that your behaviour is not appropriate. If you continue to behave badly after a telling off, then you risk getting a letter sent home to your parents, who will then be notified about how naughty you've been. So that means they'll probably tell you off as well. In some cases, when you're naughty, the teacher will remove you from the class. So you'll have to go and sit outside the headmaster's office or go and sit in the corridor to think about what you've done. If you bring in a forbidden item, let's say a mobile phone, and you're caught with that forbidden item, then you risk having the item confiscated. Confiscated means they will take it away and store it until the end of the day when you can go and collect it, but you'll probably get another telling off and you might even get a letter sent home to remind your parents that certain items are not allowed in school. The most common punishment handed out for bad behaviour is a detention. A detention is a period of time where you are kept in school after the main day has finished. So if you finish school at 3.30 but you were so naughty in your science class that you have been given a detention, it will mean you have to stay at school potentially until 4.30. During a detention, you're normally given work to do, so it's a very boring time to spend on your own or with the other naughty children at school. Severe cases of bad behaviour or repeat offenders do risk being excluded. Excluded. This means they'll be taken out of school altogether for a certain amount of time, maybe a week, maybe a month. And if you're really, really bad, perhaps if you commit a crime, like you damage the school property, or you are violent or aggressive towards teachers or other students, then you would be expelled. Expelled. That is when you are kicked out of that school forever. But you have to be very, very naughty to be expelled. And now it's confession time. What is the worst thing you have ever done at school? Were you caught and what was your punishment? I'll let you into a little secret. When I was at school, one day I was very naughty. One of my friends offered me a cigarette behind the bike shed. And so I took the cigarette, I put it to my mouth. I took a drag. And at that moment, the teacher walked around the corner, caught me and put me in detention. The worst thing was, it was my first day at school. <laughs> but I learnt my lesson. From then on, I didn't touch another cigarette and I was very good every single day of school. Well, kind of. At least I didn't get caught doing anything else. Students here will attend school from Monday to Friday and the average school day will begin around 8.45 in the morning, perhaps some of them starting at 8.55 or 9am, and they will go all the way through until around 3.15 or 3.30 in the afternoon. During that school day, they then have three breaks on average. They'll have a lunch break right in the middle of the day, which is usually between 40 minutes or an hour. 
And then they'll have two shorter breaks, a mid-morning break and an afternoon break. Every school day will start with registration. Anna English? Yes, miss. Normally schools will be open for an hour before classes begin, and some of them even hold special clubs, known as breakfast clubs, for parents to drop off the children earlier so that they can go to work. And then there'll be activity clubs held after school, which are non-compulsory, and they normally consist of sporting activities or artistic activities like dance or drama. These kinds of activities are called extracurricular activities. When I was at school, I went to an after-school club every single day. Hockey, netball, trampolining, cross-country running and football. I was very busy. In my opinion, the best part of school was lunchtime and break time. There's one big divide at lunchtime. You're either a school dinners kind of person or a packed lunch kind of person. If you had school dinners, then that means you eat the meal provided by the school. It's hot, it's kind of fresh, and depending on the school, it might be quite tasty. Normally you have to pay a little bit of money towards it, so you have to make sure you take dinner money in order to pay for your school dinner. If you're a packed lunch kind of person, that means you make your lunch at home and take it into school with you. In order to take your lunch into school, you'll have to have a very fancy lunch box. And you can choose from lots of different designs. The only problem with this, of course, is that you're always going to have a cold lunch and usually the sandwiches get quite boring after a while. Lunch time varies depending on the school. Sometimes it's 40 minutes or 50 minutes or even an hour if you're lucky. Besides lunch times, you'll have two break times, a mid-morning break and an afternoon break. Both of these breaks are around 15 minutes long and they're designed so that you can have some snacks, some refreshments and nip to the toilet if you really need to. Although it's probably best to wait until you're in the middle of class and then you can get yourself out of class by pretending that you need the toilet. I never did that. Lunch times are supervised by dinner ladies and dinner ladies will make your food, serve you and clean up after you and tell you off if you're being naughty and throwing food across the room. Interestingly, there isn't a term for a man in the role of a dinner lady. We wouldn't say dinner man. However, we do have a general term which is more widely used now, which is lunchtime supervisor. We have reached the end of our lesson. Just don't forget to give us a thumbs up on the way out of the classroom. Otherwise, class dismissed.